the most compact Jeep yet. Their first full electric model, which also happens to be car of the year. I'm Luke and welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. So just to make things clear, this is a tech-focused review. We're talking in detail about that high-voltage battery, the electric motor, and so much more. These are the most expensive and important components of the, this electric vehicle, essentially. And I feel traditional reviews just don't give that the love they deserve. If you're not interested in this and want to see more of my driving experience with the car, well, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you're notified the second that video goes live. Now here in Europe, Jeep expects that their sales will be 100% electric by 2030. And to reach that goal, they are releasing a number of full electric models, four models to be exact, within the next two years, the Jeep Avenger being the first on that list. Now the Avenger is built on the PSA ECMP2 platform. It's the result of a joint venture between the PSA group and the FCA group to form Stellantis. Now Jeeps are usually quite large, right? And looks may be deceiving in this one because it still has a lot of those traditional features we know and love about Jeeps. But this is actually the smallest Jeep ever made, intended for the urban city environment and the sort of roads we have here in Malta. It's not a small car, but it's not a big car. It's the compact SUV segment, which is so popular now here in Europe. It goes into competition with other models from the Stellantis group. Despite living though on the same platform, Jeep claim that they've changed no less than 60% of the underlying components of this car to make sure it feels truly like a Jeep. We'll be putting that to the test in my driving video, so make sure you're subscribed to check that out later. Let's talk a bit about the electric motor in this vehicle. Now, if you've been a fan of the channel, if you've been watching from episode one, you may remember that the electric motor on this platform it was subcontracted to Continental. Well, Stellantis Group has now brought motor development in-house through a new joint venture and a company called E-Motors. Now, this company is co-owned by Stellantis and NLS holdings and together they are developing a permanent magnet motor which sits in the front of this vehicle which delivers 156 brake horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. Now I do like a lot that they've brought motor development in house for this one. Subcontracting such a core component of the vehicle to someone else doesn't leave the right taste in your mouth that the brand is serious about electrification. So it is a breath of fresh air that now this electric motor is being developed in-house through this joint venture by Stellantis. The motor is designed as a package, right? So it's not only the electric motor, it's the electric motor, it's the inverter, which converts the DC energy stored in the battery to the AC energy required to run the motor and all the control units that go with it. So it's an entire package and again that's sitting in the front of the vehicle. Making this one of the first non-four-wheel drive Jeeps, right? So it's just front-wheel drive and I'll be putting some things to the test there. Does it really live up to the Jeep expectation if it's not four-wheel drive? Although a four-wheel drive version is promised to be coming on this platform as well. But till then, we're going to be checking out in my driving video some software features available which help give traction particularly on uneven surfaces, something you generally want to have four-wheel drive for. So we'll be saying if the electric motor coupled with these software features are good enough to live up to expectation in the next video. Now the acceleration is zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just nine seconds. So it's definitely not the fastest EV we've seen on the channel, but you need to remember a bit who this vehicle is for and where it is intended to be used on city streets. So you're definitely not going to be slow out of the traffic lights, that's for sure. So let's talk about that all important battery pack. So the battery pack is 54 kilowatt hours, which means it stores 54 units of electricity. However, the actual usable capacity is 50.8 kilowatt hours. So that's actually the size you should consider. Battery pack found under the passenger compartment, taking up nearly the full length of the vehicle between the two wheel axes. As you can tell though, 
Despite being there, it does not affect my headroom in any way. I am 180 centimeters tall, by the way. Now, this is a 400 volt architecture with a 102 individual battery cells, which when paired together, make up the battery pack. Those cells are being provided by Chinese manufacturer, Chinese battery conglomerate, right? CATL. And they are of the NMC chemistry, nickel, manganese, cobalt in the 8-1-1 ratio. So you have eight parts nickel, one part manganese, one part cobalt. And just to be clear, lithium is always in the mix, even though it's not mentioned here. Lithium actually makes up the least amount of material in the battery. It just is sort of like the secret sauce, which gives it its high energy density, hence the name lithium ion battery. Now paired with that battery, another important feature is the battery cooling technology. Now that has a twofold importance. One being the safety. So a, a battery which gets uncontrollably hot is not a good thing. So the cooling system helps prevent that from happening. But also the cooling system has a second role to play and it protects the longevity of the battery. If a lithium ion battery gets hot, it over time reduces its capacity. This is what tends to happen on our phones and laptops, which do not have cooling technology or the same level of cooling that the cars have. So in the, this liquid cooled technology, which is in this vehicle, you have a cooling circuit at the module level, keeping those battery cells at the ideal temperature, generally of around 25 degrees Celsius. Now what I like about what we have in the Jeep here is that this is an active system. For Malta, I think that's important. Basically, this means that irrelevant of whether the car is being driven, being charged, where it tends to get hot, or simply being parked in the sun, the car will turn on. Even if you're not in it or using it, it will turn on and it will start to cool the battery to bring it back down to that ideal 25 degrees Celsius. I've experienced this myself even in my garage. It got so hot one summer night and I hadn't been using the car for a few hours that I, I literally heard it turn on and it's, it starts, you know, this, this whole venting process to cool the battery. You should be happy when you hear that noise. It's also worth noting that a heat pump comes as standard with the Jeep Avenger. That's going to help your range, especially in extreme cold or extreme hot circumstances. And that heat pump is playing a multiple role, right? It's taking um, the heat not only from the cabin, but from the battery and also outside and managing that temperature in the best way possible. So let's talk about the all important range of the vehicle. So this is essentially how much range you're going to get before you have to recharge the vehicle. If you're new to electric vehicles, I want to make it clear. You're not going to be charging them every night like your cell phone. This is 400 kilometers. That's good enough in Malta to last most people, probably like when I say most people, I say the average driver, two weeks. So you're charging this car twice every month, probably the same as you used to fuel your fuel car anyway. So 400 kilometers, but how true is that range. Well, if you come from a cold country, you may be saying, ah, it says 400, but it gives me 300 in, in the real world. Malta, the situation is different because of our ideal climate, our ideal speeds and our ideal driving conditions. We actually generally come close, meet or even exceed at times the WLTP rating of the vehicle. But I'm gonna go a step further because in my driving video, I'm gonna be driving this car for a while and I'm gonna check the real world efficiency. Does it live up to it? And from that number, we can work backwards. I can confirm or not what range you would get in this car here in the real world. If you have this car, leave a comment down below with what range you are getting. And if you want to check out the driving video, again, make sure you're subscribed below. Let's talk a bit about regen or regeneration. So electric cars have the ability to recharge the battery as the car is essentially slowing down or braking. In a fuel car, once you press the pedal, burn the fuel, you've wasted that energy whether you use it or not. In an electric car, once you press the pedal and you come to slow down, that energy is recouped by recharging the battery. In fact, the car regenerates or, or regenerates up to 20% of the energy it is, it is sort of using. So that's a critical feature. Now that's achieved using what is called the B mode in this car, activated 
from the center console. So there is a light mode, which is always on, but barely noticeable, to be honest. And then if you want a more aggressive feel, then you turn on the B mode. This is actually very comfortable um, to drive with once you get used to it, because it means that every time you lift off the accelerator, the car will start to slow down. It does not come to a complete halt, so this is not a one pedal driving experience, but it's generally enough at a roundabout, say, till you make the decision if you're gonna use the brake or not, um, essentially to drive with. It's definitely worth trying out for yourself. So let's talk charging. I know this confuses a lot of people and there's so many numbers and so much different hours or minutes. Let's, let's understand this clearly. So first we start with AC. So this is the type of charging you're going to do at home or even on the majority of the public network. So on AC, this car can charge at a maximum of 11 kilowatts. That means, and that is on three phase. So if you have a three phase supply at home or the road network, which is all three phase supply. With that power, this car can charge in 5.5 hours at a maximum. And that's, remember, that's from zero to 100%. If you're charging from 20%, which is generally what you do, obviously the time is shorter. Now, if you don't have three phase and you're charging at home, and you're on single phase, then the maximum power there is 7.4 kilowatts. That will charge the car in just over eight hours. Now, it's important to mention though, that 7.4 is a bit of an unreasonable power or slash speed. Why is that? Well, here in Malta, we get a 40 amp supply at home. Charging at 7.4 kilowatts means you're using up 32 amps of those 40 to charge the car leaving very little power for the rest of the appliances in the house. So unless it is a standalone garage with its own supply, you're not going to be charging at 7.4 kilowatts. The more likely scenario is you're going to charge on single phase, that is, at around 3.7 kilowatts, which is good and still leaves quite a lot for the rest of the appliances in the house. In that case, you will take 16 hours to charge this vehicle again from zero percent to full if you're charging on a standard three pin plug which i don't recommend but you can do that it will take 26 hours to fully charge this vehicle now it's worth noting that this car also has a dc rapid charging option at a hundred kilowatt power rating now that means you can charge this car in just 26 minutes now Remember, DC is generally used on highway situations where you want to charge the car faster. Here in Malta, it's worth noting, our current fastest DC rapid chargers are 50 kilowatts. So the charging time will be double in this case till the public network essentially catches up the speeds the cars can accept. I'd like to give a special shout out to Jeep Malta and Motors Inc. for their collaboration on today's video. Peter for helping out with all the technical, and of course, you, the viewer. If you've learned something new, make sure you hit that like button below. And if you haven't already, a subscribe does go a long way for a growing YouTube channel like this one. As you can appreciate, the content of this video is very different to the typical reviews found on YouTube. I think the core concepts of the battery and electric motor are so important moving forward into this new age of mobility. So if you think that's important, please help spread the channel and this video. But as always, I hope I and the Jeep Avenger car of the year have convinced you that the future is electric.